If you look around my office, you might realize I have kind of a love for dark, twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark, twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. You know, I was asking myself, does this count? Does this really count as an animated short? And then I realized it's my goddamn show, I'll do whatever I want. I wanna talk about pink elephants on parade. This is a segment from the movie Dumbo released in 1941. It's one of my favorite all-time Disney things ever. I'm so excited to talk about it. Let's take a look. So of course we should talk about one of the biggest things that gets brought up when the sequence gets brought up, uh, which is that your main protagonist, a cute little boy elephant, gets drunk. I think elephants, of course, is a euphemism for being drunk, as if you get too schlockered, you, you know, apparently see pink elephants or you, or you don't see right. Uh, but this sequence, anyone that's been drunk knows this is not drunk. This is what happens when you trip balls. But I guess back in the day, it wasn't as offensive to have your young main character get drunk instead. So, uh, okay, priorities? <laughs> As many people brought up, there's not really a reason for this to be in the film except that Dumbo somehow has to be asleep in order for him to fly up into a tree. Uh, in fact, in many uh, children's books versions of this story, uh, they just have him fall asleep. He's sleepy, falls asleep, he wakes up in a tree. All of this essentially is pointless. You don't need it. There's not even really much animation uh, indicating like he's dreaming and he's flying. That would make a little bit more sense. Uh, this is really just an excuse to do really cool animation and some great surrealism. And you can tell it left an impact because so many people reference this moment. Uh, Tiny Toons, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons. Anyone that's like really into animation knows this sequence because it is just so creative and enjoyably freaky. You'll notice the elephants in this don't have any eyes. They just sort of have these black holes and it just emphasizes kind of like the surrealism of it, uh, especially being against a black background most of the time. So you don't even know, are they three dimensional and you just can't see into their eyes or are they really flat and you're just seeing into the background there? <laughs> What they do with line work and sort of that playfulness of it, that it doesn't have to stay in necessarily one realm. For example, you look at the elephants here, uh, they all have instruments, but they're all instruments that are somehow connected to their bodies. It's usually their trunks or their heads or their feet. I mean, just that alone, if you go back and slow it down and really look at the design of each elephant and the instrument they're playing and how it's connected to them, literally connected to them, uh, it's incredibly creative. Disney has clearly shown they're the masters of doing a very elegant, realistic animation, but there's also something to be said about the animation that just totally goes into the subconscious, doesn't care about rules, it just focuses on visuals and letting the mind really explode and explore, and I really feel like that's what something like this does, and that's why so many people remember it. <laughs> Even the colors in this, I know you think pink elephants, the only color is pink, but there's different shades of it. There's a dark pink, light pink, a lot of them uh, kind of have a gradient from going to kind of like this dark purple to this uh, kind of light maroon color. And the outlines around them have to be different shades of white because of that. They can't all be the exact same shade of white. Again, it, it almost looks too flat, so you change something as minute as that. Maybe like an off-white instead of uh, like an eggshell white or something like that can just totally change uh, the dimension of it. There's our plastered hero, you know, for kids! Look out! Look out! Pink elephants on parade! And of course another big part of this is the song, specifically the singers. And I was very interested to find out that the people that sung this, uh, it was a group called The Sportsmen, which I never heard of, but uh, two of the singers in there uh, were Thurl Ravenscroft, who you may know as Tony the Tiger and from The Grinch and other things, and the other is Mel Blanc, the voice of Bugs Bunny and the majority of the Looney Tunes, does a lot of the voices in this. And the nice thing about Ravenscroft 
Croft and Mel Blanc is that you can very easily pick out their voices. So now knowing that, you can just imagine the voice of Porky Pig doing this. I am not the type to faint when things are odd or... Th Hilariously freaky, isn't it? I can stand the sight of worms and look at microscopic germs. The song was written by Oliver Wallace and Ned Washington, who had done a lot of Disney projects before. Uh, they had done things like uh, Pinocchio and Peter Pan and Darby O'Gill, so a lot of very memorable tunes. The section was directed by Norm Ferguson, who had also done a lot of very uh, surreal stuff for Disney. Uh, he did like Alice in Wonderland and The Three Capieros and Fantasia. So again, he had a background in doing very, very surreal stuff. They're walking around the bed, on the head. I love this bed because you can't really tell what angle it's at because what's in the foreground is uh, looking a lot smaller and what's in the background is looking a lot bigger. So it's only when it starts twisting that you see the proper dimensions of it. Again, just anything to really play with what you're used to seeing and turning it upside down and on its head, uh, it just does a phenomenal job on. What'll I do? What'll I do? That's straight out of a nightmare. That used to freak the hell out of me. Just imagine waking up to that. I mean, there is a legit creep factor to this. It's fun and goofy, but but it is very uncomfortable. It's really too much for me. <laughs> I am not the type to faint. When this part used to freak me out, too. I think a lot of it's that sort of strange, not male, not female voice. It's just so not familiar uh, that it really puts you in an odd spot. And the same thing, again, Again, with the colors and the designs here usually in a movie like this you know you have these black outlines and these solid colors uh, in between but here you have these different color lines these different patterns these colors that don't always go together and, and they clash I think again one of the reasons the scene is so great is because an adult can watch it we're used to seeing things mostly make sense uh, you know tell a story beginning middle and end and everything and have a purpose uh, and, and this is just pure nonsense but it's such beautiful surreal nonsense that it really takes you into a different world. I really think that's something to be appreciated. Can certainly give you an awful fright. What a sight! Look at that thing. Come on, that that's a work of art. And again, with the backgrounds, you don't need much. It's mostly black, but they just have that little blue line at the bottom gives you an idea it's on a hill. Uh, almost like it's like a fisheye lens that you're looking at, especially when they get closer to the camera, they get a little distorted as well. And, and just the tiniest things. That's what I like about line work, very simple line work that can somehow create a world, is that you don't need much. I like how it kind of tricks your brain into thinking there's more there with something that's very, very simple. And this always drove me nuts. Why does the camel elephant have his pupils? Why does he have eyes? That always drove me insane. What is so special about the camel elephant <laughs> that's warranting that? But again, I think it's just trying to keep you uh, unaware of what's coming next. I mean, it keeps the excitement in there. I mean, even something as simple as just giving that one eyes and yes, why? I mean, maybe you're not verbally saying it, but in the back of your mind, you're like, why does that one have real eyes? I mean, just little cues like that. And this is something right out of a dream. The trunk becomes a snake, the snake becomes the dancer, the dancer just becomes the belly, the belly becomes an eye. And I think if it did play more into the story, it would not be as surprising. You would kind of figure, oh, maybe the visuals are gonna go this way next, because it's gonna tie into, again, him flying or something like that. But by just going completely off the rails, uh, it just keeps it uh, more and more surprising where you don't know what's coming. Again, we were talking about before the uh, line work, how you have sort of those white outlines and they even had to have different colors of white, different shades of white for the outlines. Now it's nothing but the reflected light. It reminds me a lot of uh, the Headless Horseman, how there was only reflected light on him, so it looked otherworldly. And now we just completely change the style of how the line work on them is done and the lighting on them is done. And even the colors don't quite match. Are they lit from uh, the top or the bottom? If so, why are they different colors? Why is the bottom green and the top pink? It's these little clues that you say, well, okay, that's weird, or it's really, really strange, but you can't always pinpoint every reason why. So choices like this uh, are very conscious. They're trying to say, how can we just make this a little weirder? Play with the lighting, play with the colors uh, in a way that your brain wouldn't register right away, but it, it would still connect to it. It would still connect to, this is odd for some reason. This is something I haven't really seen. There have been 
tons of covers on this song by people that obviously love it just as much as I do. Uh, some of the more enjoyable ones uh, are from Broken Peach, Jardin Mechanique, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, there's a dubstep version out there as well. <laughs> do a search, you'll find all sorts of creative uh, takes on this. <laughs> This is where it gets a little bit more standard Disney. It's not uncreative, but it's just kind of elephants dancing and having fun. There's not as much playing around with line work and uh, uh, surrealism here, but the way it wraps up is pretty insane, so uh, that's fun. Maybe the idea was to lure you into more of a calm, relaxed uh, kind of setting. You know, you had them kind of skating to nice music, and then you have them doing a nice little, like, samba dance, and then just suddenly pure chaos with the lights flashing and the backgrounds changing color and them changing into different... Uh, uh, vehicles and trains and stuff like that and the loud noises and explosions and such and finally just amounting to one big kaboom. <laughs> is finally our transition back into the real world, which is already very strange. I, I mean, I think people forget just kind of how odd the movie Dumbo is. There are a lot of very strange, bizarre angles in it and imagery, but uh, I, I think this is where it just gets the craziest. And I like this transition where the uh, pink elephants kind of become the clouds and the sunrise is very nice and the music is very nice. Very much sounds like a satire of uh, the William Tell Overture with the morning. And we and on some really nice uh, lighting and shadow work. Uh, that tree is just beautifully colored, reflecting life in the bottom, just very, very nicely done. And nothing else happened afterwards. <laughs> no other character showed up that uh, uh, really polarized a lot of people. <laughs> so the movie just ends there. Man, I love it. I think there's a reason so many people reference it and remember it and are kind of fascinated by it. Uh, even for a movie as strange as Dumbo uh, with all the surreal imagery in it, uh, this one stands out the most. This one just goes the most crazy. Because I know a lot of you are going to ask it, I might as well talk about uh, the Pink Elephant sequel from the Tim Burton version, uh, which clearly is not as impressive, but to his credit, uh, I think he and Disney knew they couldn't do something like this. You can't have the main character get drunk, you can't have him get high, you can't have any of that happen. Uh, and the segment, I don't think, would really belong in a movie like that. I mean, like a lot of you, I don't think the movie quite worked. Uh, but even for the tone they're trying to create, uh, I think a lot of the other strange imagery in that matched more. And that sequence, honestly, still kind of has another worldly feel to it. I actually didn't mind it as much, but maybe that's because I knew they wouldn't be able to do something like this. So I, I actually didn't mind as much as a lot of other uh, people did. But just like the sequence, it's pretty pointless. <laughs> so if you're gonna see one, see this one, because it's just done so much better. I love this moment. I used to watch it all the time as a little kid, and I know a lot of other people really, really love it. Uh, so i love to know, what did you think of it growing up? And not only growing up, but what do you think of it now? Uh, do you just see it as a totally pointless moment and should be cut from the film? Or do you think it's a really great moment? Do you just wish it worked its way more into the story? Or do you think it's a great moment, just shouldn't have had him getting drunk <laughs> at all? Or do you think it's perfect the way it is? It's nice that it doesn't connect to anything else in the story. It's kind of this little escape after all the other unpleasantness that's going on with like the mother in the story and everything so uh I love it just the way it is. I just absolutely love this sequence. I think it's fantastic. I think there's so much that can just open up the imagination, your creativity just by watching it and, uh, you know, looking at the line work and the colors and stuff. So if you're ever looking to just open up your imagination, this is a good sequence to watch. Hey everyone, if there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being very dark or twisted, leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm not really looking for movie scenes or cartoons meant for teenagers or older. I'm talking about ones meant for little kids, but still scare the shit out of you. Whether it's an old cartoon or a new cartoon, let me know what you want me to look at.